Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Let's learn again something new today. So today we are going to learn about the Horn of Africa. See the earth, the planet earth is full of wonders, right? See there are various physiographic wonders on the surface of the earth. There are longest mountain ranges like the Andes. There are highest mountain peaks like the Himalayas. There are deepest points like the Challenger deep in the oceans. There are various largest islands like the Iceland or the Greenland and the Borneo Islands, right? There are vast oceans like the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. There are various, you know, such physiographic regions are there on the surface of the earth. These physiographic regions are the, they have provided lot of diversity to the mother earth, right? See, we are going to learn about one such wonderful area on the surface of the earth that is the Horn of Africa. This Horn of Africa, it is known for its various reasons. It will be always in the news because of some of the ongoing issues like civil wars, uh, because of the some oil related issues, global oil supply. There are various other straits uh, in uh, nearer to this region. There are Babel and Mandeb Strait. There are Gulf of Aden. There is Red Sea. See, because of these reasons, so this uh, area will always be in news. Again, along with these points, there will be this region will be known for the hungerness or the hunger deaths, civil wars, internal strifes, internal displacement of the people. See, these are all associated with the Horn of African region. We are going to learn about such a, you know, such a very important region or the place on the surface of the earth. Okay, let's move further. The Horn of Africa. Where is this Horn of Africa? Why this is called as the Horn, right? Let's look into that. This area, it is also known as the Somali Peninsula. Because of its close proximity to the peninsula of the Somalia or the Somalian country, it is also called as the Somali Peninsula. It is located in the easternmost part of the African mainland. You know, there is a continent called the Africa. To the extreme east of this African continent, there is a this region called the Horn of Africa. It is the large peninsula. For the matter, for that matter, it is the largest peninsula in the African continent, but it is the fourth largest peninsula in the world. Okay, this is the fourth largest peninsula in the world. It is composed of there are some countries in this region. These four countries constitute the Horn of the Africa. What are those four countries? They are Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, right, and Djibouti. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and Djibouti. This is Somali land. This is part of the Somalia itself. Do not confuse. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and Djibouti. They constitute the Horn of Africa. See, for remembering it easily, you can you know, make a code word like seeds. These are the four countries which constitute the Horn of Africa, Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia and Djibouti. So you can remember this code word seed. So you can remember the countries in the Horn of Africa. Then sometimes it is referred to simply as the Horn. Instead of you no know, pronouncing it as the Horn of Africa, it is simply pronounced as the Horn. Okay. The inhabitant or the people who are dwelling in this place, they are called as the Horn Africans. Okay. The people who are living in the Horn of African region, they are called as the Horn Africans. Okay, this area, this Horn of Africa, it is surrounded by some of the water bodies. What are those water bodies? Red Sea, God of Holy Channel, Gulf of Aden, right? Red Sea, God of Holy Channel, Gulf of Aden, and Indian Ocean. Okay, these are the major water bodies that surround the Horn of African region. Then this region also shares the maritime border with the Arabian Peninsula of the Western Asia. That means it also shares the maritime border. That means water border with the Arabian Peninsula in the Asian region. Okay, let's look in, into the map of this area. This is what is the African continent, right? <coughs> This is the part of our Asian region. This is the West Asia or you can call it as the Arabian Peninsula. This is whole 
area is the African continent. Okay, north of Africa there is a water body called as the the Mediterranean Sea. West of this African continent there is the Atlantic Ocean. Right, east of this African mainland is the our Indian Ocean. Right, this largest island in this region is the Madagas Madagascar Island. Right, this is the Mozambique Channel. The area which divides the Asian part from the African part is called as the Red Sea. Okay, this is the narrow channel of the water that is called as the Red Sea. North of this Red Sea is the our Mediterranean Sea. This Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea they are joined together by one artificial canal called as the Suez Canal. Okay, this Suez Canal has been opened between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. Right below the Red Sea there is a Gulf of Aden. Okay, this is the see this is the geographical setup of the African continent. See this African continent is also known for some of the uh, very uh, important regions called as the Sahara Desert, right? This is a Sahara Desert, right? All of this area north of this point is the Sahara Desert. Below the Sahara Desert, there is a one more place called as the Sahel region. Okay. Okay. This region is the Sahel region. I will write it here. Okay. This area from westernmost point to the Ethiopia to this point. Okay, this area is called as the Sahel region. It is a transition zone between the uh, your savanna grassland. Below this area is the savanna grassland, right? This is the savanna grassland. Okay, north of savanna grassland there is a Sahel region. North of Sahel region is the Sahara Desert. Okay, these are some of the important regions. Along with this, there are, again below the sa savanna, south of savanna there are. Equatorial uh, rainforests, right? Equatorial. This African continent is mainly known for the equatorial rainforests. Equatorial rainforest, savanna, Sahel region, and Sahara. These are some of the predominant or the prominent geographical features on the African continent. Along with them, we are studying the Horn of Africa. See, this is the Horn of Africa. Magnified version of this area is this, right? This is your Ethiopia. This is Somalia. This is Eritrea and small country here it is the Djibouti or see Djibouti it, it is written like this. It starts with D but it is pronounced as the uh, G right Djibouti. See these are the four countries in this region they constitute the horn. Now see, you can look into this map very clearly. This is Ethiopia, this is Eritrea, here it is the Djibouti and this is the Somalia. Right, I said this area is surrounded by some of the water bodies like the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea, this is the Gulf of Aden, this is the Indian Ocean, right? This whole of this western part of this region is the African mainland, right? But there is a one narrow channel between the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. That narrow channel or the strait is called as the Bab al Mandeb, okay? Babel, Mandeb. This is the narrow channel between Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. It separates the Asia from the African mainland, but it joins Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. Okay, but east of Gulf of Aden, that is at the tip of this Somalia. See, this is the peninsula. I said this is the one of the largest peninsulas in the world, right? What is the meaning of peninsula? Peninsula is nothing but the land area which is surrounded on its three sides by the water, right? The land area having the water on its three sides is called as the peninsula. This is the Somali Peninsula. I said this Horn of Africa is also called as the Somalian Peninsula because this country is the Somalia in all of its sides. See, on the west, on the sorry, on the north, on the east, and on the south, this area, this land land area is surrounded by the water that is why it is called as the peninsula right see at the tip of this peninsula at the this tip of this peninsula somalian peninsula is called as the cape of gardafoli right cape of cape of gardafoli okay that the tip of this peninsula right see this is the geographical setup of this uh, no, area then this area or this whole region is equidistant from the equator as well as the Tropic of Cancer. This is very important. So that means if you travel from the center of this point 
towards the north or towards the south there is a equal distance okay if you travel the equal distance towards the north you will reach the uh, tropic of cancer if you travel from this point to the towards the south uh, the same distance will get the equator see this is the equator right this is the equator then here comes the 23 and half degree north that is tropic of cancer see approximately in this area see almost at the uh, the tip of southern tip of this region is bordered by the equator northern tip of this region is bordered by the tropic of cancer see this is the geographical location of this area okay then it consists chiefly of mountains okay this is the mountainous region especially in the ethiopian country this area or this region contains the mountains okay these mountains are uplifted through the formation of great lift valley this is also very important great rift valley okay this africa especially the eastern part of africa is known for the rift valley it is also called as the great rift valley or the east african rift valley this area or the mountains which are found in the ethiopian uh, highlands or the ethiopian country they are they are part of the or they are the result of the east african rift valley uh, process okay now let's learn something about the great rift valley it is a fissure that means it is a rift or it is a split in the earth earth's crust it extends from the turkey to the mozambique okay that means it this rift or this split in the earth crust it it spreads from mozambique in the south towards the turkey in the north turkey is in the africa asian continent right this rift valley extends from mozambique in the south to the turkey in the north but it runs through all the countries in between them like mozambique is there zambia is there right uh, your uh, rwanda uganda uh, kenya ethiopia all of these countries are covered by the east african rift valley okay it is the it is it is mark it marks the separation of the african and the arabian tectonic plates yes this earth has or the earth crust has lot of plates there are seven major plates these are moving continuously every day that means the earth crust is dynamic the plates are moving in different directions when there is a you know uh, meeting of the plates there is a elevation of the region that is the mountains are formed when there is a split or when the plates move apart from each other there is the rift or there is a split in the earth crust okay this split or the east african rift valley is the result of the tectonic plates that means the plates which are moving apart okay one is african plate and one is arabian tectonic plates because of these you know separation of the plates the rift is created then geologically the horn and the amen the horn or the the part which belongs to the african continent it was the you know uh, part of the asian landmass also that means the amen was attached with the somalia so because of the creation of the rift because of the creation of the gulf of aden okay this A uh, africa and the asia were separated okay I this happened 18 million years ago now this is the rift of the africa or east african rift valley see from it extends from this point okay this is the mozambique it you know uh, runs like this and it you know goes up to uh, the turkey also here you will find the our horn of africa this horn of africa is part of the east african rift valley system okay this is the mountainous region in the map you can observe this is the mountainous region these mountains are formed because of this rift system okay then then next very important uh, you know region in this you know a major area is the socotra island okay socotra island where is this socotra island this socotra island is located again in the eastern part of this tip okay i said the cape of gordofoli the east of this cape of gordofoli or east of the somalian peninsula there is one small island called as the socotra island this island is part of the asian continent it belongs to this socotra island belongs to the amen okay this area or the arabian peninsula contains various countries like the amen oman uae bahrain qatar turkey saudi arabia 
all of them all of these countries can be found in the arabian peninsula but this socotra island belongs to the yemen yemen is the one of the countries in the arabian peninsula right the territory or the jurisdiction of yemen extends to the socotra island also but this socotra island is you know very uh, unique island because one third of the pop, uh, species or the plant and the animal species found in this area are not found anywhere on the surface of the earth that means it has lot of endemism of these species okay this is known for very unique trees called as the dra dragon's blood trees let's look into the picture of that tree see this is the dragon blood tree right it is a very strange looking umbrella shaped tree it is called as the dragon blood tree okay it it, it looks like a flying saucer saucer per, perch, perched on the trees that means the saucers which are flying in the air they are, as if they seem like they are taking shelter on the uh, tree surface okay this is the dragon bird sorry dragon blood tree now next very important feature uh, i mean the feature or the characteristics of this you know region is the arid lowlands the lowlands of the horn are generally arid in in spite of their proximity to the equator especially the areas which are very nearer to the equator they will experience high rainfall right there is a high humidity there is high sunlight also but unlike the equatorial regions though this is located in the same equatorial region this is known for the aridity that means it is known for the droughts because the air or the monsoon winds which enter the continent okay they will shed the water in the east sorry western part of the continent see when the air travels through the sahel region the air or the moisture laden air will drop all the moisture in the western part of the continent but when the time by the time they reach the this horn of african region the air will lose all of its moisture content because of that the aridity has been created in the inner region of this horn of africa okay see i have written clearly that the because of the winds of the tropical monsoon here this area also experiences the monsoon rains uh, that gives seasonal rains to the sahel region let's look the sahel region so this is the sahel region right i said the north of this sahel region is the sahara desert south of this sahel region is the savanna grassland this is the transitional area between the desert and the grassland right see the monsoons here they will enter in this direction the monsoons are entering here the monsoon winds will drop all the moisture in the mauritania mali niger chad or the sudan but by the time they reach the uh, gulf sorry horn of africa the moisture will be lost and the, there will be very dry winds because of that this area experiences the droughts and the aridity uh, during the most of the time of the year okay then then one more important feature in this region is the dun dunkil desert or the dunkil desert this is again the desert which is located in the ethiopia it's you know this desert is expanded between the eritrea ethiopia also okay so this arid region is known for the extreme heat and the volcanoes also in the dunkil desert there is a high high number of volcanoes there is a extreme temperature it extends between 45 degrees and the 50 degree celsius in most of part of the year okay then as i said because of the low moisture content because of the high aridity this area experiences the drought like situations throughout the year okay this drought situation is again complicated or it is made more and more complex because of the climate change global warming and changing agricultural patterns in the region okay then what is the economy how the economy of this region is you know maintained what are the major economical activities of the people in this region let's look into that over 95% of the cross border trade takes place unofficially that means the trade which is taking place between the borders of the different countries it is not documented properly this trade is not recognized by the governments in the region okay that means it is unofficial and it is undocumented trade which is being carried out by the people in the local region okay what kind of trading takes place here the trading takes place especially the animals like the cattle uh, cattle animals or the camels sheep goats okay they are exchanged between the countries 
this you know trade is up to the tune of 250 to 300 million dollars every year okay it is unofficial see according to the official figures only around 3 million dollar to 2.5 million dollar to 3 million dollar trade takes place in the region officially but unofficially since this trade is under documented since it is illegal trade see uh, according to the informal figures it is up to the tune of 250 to 300 million dollars every year okay the trade helps this trade is helping to maintain the peace in the region it this trade informal trade is you know helping the people uh, with respect to the food security also right this trade helps lower the food prices increase the food security relieve the, relieve the border tensions and promote the regional integration see these are very very important aspects i said in the introductory remark that this region is known for the hunger deaths poverty cross border you know disputes or unsettled border uh, tensions see these tensions these wars they can be reduced because of this illegal trade sorry unrecognized trade because the people in one country they will depend on another country for some of the goods which are not found in their native place right see because of this dependency of the people on the different resources this you know uh, trade is helping to maintain the peace to a certain extent in the region but the governments are unhappy obviously the, if the so much of trade is happening between the countries illegally obviously governments are at the losing side they they are uh, unhappy because very low amount of tax is collected our tax revenue received is very less these governments want to impose the tax by recognizing or preventing the illegal trade uh, in the region now what are the issues related to the horn yeah, there are various issues because of these issues this uh, horn of africa will always be in the news what are those in the past this region has been exposed to the wrongs of the imperialism this has expo- experienced the neo colonialism this was the you know one of the puppets in the countries uh, the ideologically different countries during the cold war there are various ethnic strifes there are intra african conflicts there are poverty issues various diseases which are pandemic in nature they are experiencing the famine there are protracted armed conflict between the citizens as well as the governments of their own country there are severe food crisis large scale displacement of the people in the region these people have become the refugees and they are seeking the you know asylum in the other countries also these are very pressing issues which are being faced by the region okay that is the horn of african region now let's go into the very uh, current issues okay they are also very very important with respect to the uh, security in the region as well as with respect to the security of the oil trade also and with respect to the development of the region also first one is the somali pirates you might have seen or you might have you know read about these you know piracy in the region they especially these somali people who are involved in the piracy they are known for their notorious activities in the region they are destabilizing the trade in the region they are you know obstructing the movement of the commercial ships which are carrying the oil or other goods to the another countries also this piracy has become cause of concern for many of the countries especially the india and the china because these are the highest you know importing countries in the region most of the trade takes place to the red sea and the gulf of aden especially after opening of the suez canal this suez canal was opened in the year 18, 18 sorry in the 19th century 1869 this suez canal was opened after this point there is a huge amount of you know uh, trade is taking place so this somali pirates have created the obstruction to the this trade the countries like india and the china they want to you know uh, c- control this piracy in the region then this is known for maternal and child mortality yes i said because of the continuous droughts because of the prevalence of the aridity during the larger part of the year obviously there will be low food production along with the low food production because of the civil wars because of the intra uh, country or sorry uh, interstate disputes there are conflicts because of these conflicts they the people in the region they have been made to flood 
Oh, they have been made to go away from their countries because of these issues people are you know, facing the food crisis because of these issues there is a high death rate of the pregnant women or lactating women and the newborn child also so this reason is known for maternal and child mortality then yes civil wars and the border disputes this area it will always be in news because of the unsettled borders. The borders are not properly settled. Because of that, there are conflicts, political conflicts as well as military conflicts also. So, they have faced devastating interstate wars during the 1964, 1977, 2006. Still, till today, there are issues, there are conflicts going on between Ethiopia and other countries in the region like Eritrea and Ethiopia. Okay, still, even in the 2022, also, these countries are fighting for unsettled borders. Then, we have now very much uh, uh, we have read something about the horn of africa so far now we have become familiar with the region let's look into the significance of this area to the india because this is very close to india there is uh, sometimes this amen Djibouti, they are very nearer to the south india compared to the delhi see uh, the people from uh, kerala they can go to amen or somali very easily than they reach the Delhi because the distance between Delhi and the Cochin is more compared to the distance between Kerala and the Djibouti or Somalia right see because of this this area that means that this distance highlights that this area this horn of Africa is very close to the India that means whatever the the development takes place in the region that will directly or indirectly will affect the India also whether it is a security related issue or oil production issue or any other issue whatever happens in the Horn of Africa will definitely affect the India's interests also so because of this the Horn of Africa is very very significant for India first one is the first significance comes that is the security right I said these are these countries are facing the internal disputes there are unsettled borders again see what if this region experiences the insecurity or if there are wars in the region indian people are working there their security comes first for the indian government they have to secure the life of the people in the region right during the 2015 conflict between saudi arabia and the yemen the Yemen is known for the civil wars, especially the Houthi rebels. These Houthi rebels, they want to dethrone the government. They want to establish their own government. But the Saudi Arabia, again involved in this you know, conflict, there is a conflict between uh, Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Because of this conflict, the Indians which were working in the Yemen, they were facing the severe threats for their lives. But during that time, this Djibouti supported Indian government in the Operation Rahat. So the government of India launched the operation Rahat, Rahat to rescue the people of Indian people who were located in the Yemen. Okay. See, because of these kind of arrangements, because of the Indian people working there, the security of this region becomes very, very important for India. Then trading, yes, since the ancient times, there are references during the Indus Valley civilization also because of the boat making activity of the Harappan civilization there is a you, you can say that there was a flourishing trade between the india or the indus valley civilization win and with the african continent in this region right that means the trade is happening between india and this region since ancient times right it is also still today it is taking place then proximity to the oil producing region especially the middle east yes this middle east is known for the oil economy the 40 percent of the oil which is produced in the middle east it has to pass through the gulf of Aden. in this gulf of Aden, the Djibouti acts as the choke point if the Djibouti decides to block the babel mandab it can be you know closed 40 percent of the oil trade can be stopped right see because of this you know uh, reason this area becomes very very significant for the indian government now shipping routes yes uh, since the 40 percent of the oil you know transport takes place through the babal mandeb the the we have to secure the shipping lanes because of the shipping lanes are the ship, shipping routes 
this has to be secured see for example the united states of america france and the china they have already established their military bases in the djibouti because they want to gain the confidence of the djibouti if the djibouti decides to choke the point that is gabbal uh, Babal Mandeb, I said the 40% of the trade can, oil trade can be stopped. Because of that, this US, France, China, they want to gain the confidence. They want to you know, enjoy the trust of the Djibouti for all the time. That is why they are establishing the military base in the region. With the new reliance on the sea, let's look into the very, very important region of India. Because of the new reliance on the sea lines of communication, for the India's economic growth, the government of India very recently declared that India's national interests extends to the, they were not no longer limited to the subcontinent itself, but the, the national interests are extended or they are stretched to the, added to the uh, Malacca Strait. That means whatever happens in the Gulf of Aden or whatever happens in the Strait of Malacca, they will also affect the India's interests. That is why the Delhi or the government of India declared that India's national interests, they are extended not only to the subcontinent. That means they are not extended only in the Bangladesh, Pakistan or Afghanistan or Nepal. No, they are also extended beyond the region. They extend up to Gulf of Aden to the Strait of Malacca, right? See this because of this, you know, renewed interest, renewed reliance on the sea lines of communication. This, you know, Horn of Africa becomes very, very significant for India. Now, yes, this region is very important or significant for India. It is also significant for China also because uh, the, because of the close proximity of this area to the oil producing region that is the Middle East, and because of the sea lines of communication, China also wants to establish its, you know. Uh, supremacy in the region. See what this China is doing, what kind of activity uh, in, in which this China is involved in the region. See this is involved, this China is involved in the One Belt and One Road initiatives. That means now it is called as the Belt and Road Initiative or BRI. See because of this initiative, the China is you know, uh, it is laying or it is establishing the rail links between the different countries in the region, right? Regular deployment of the naval units, I said because of the Somali pirates, because of the increased piracy in the region, China is also deploying its naval forces or the naval units to fight against the Somali pirates. Then it has established the military base in the Djibouti. Okay, these are the activities of the China in the region. Then very recently, the China concluded in, uh, in January, it said that there are three interests for China in the region. What are those three interests of the China? To control the pandemic. I said this Horn of Africa is known for the pandemics. That means diseases. The China wants to control the diseases in the region and it wants to implement the outcomes of the, there was a conference called the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation. There were some decisions uh, were made these decisions have to be implemented steadfastly this china or it wants to implement the outcomes of this conference in, in their letter and spirit this is what the china said in january and it wants to uphold the common interests while fighting the hegemonic politics that means hegemonic politics means dominance of one country over the political politics of the other country this china wants to fight against that hegemony in the region see this is what these are the statements given by the China in the January 2022, but very, very recently in the June, in, in the last week of the June, the China said the first China Horn of Africa Peace, Governance and Development Conference took place. See, the China involved in one of the conference with the members of this Horn of Africa, it, in, that, was, that conference was China and Horn of Africa peace governance and development conference in the, this is the one of it you know such you know first conference in which the china aims to talk about the security of the region see here these are all developmental issues right whether controlling the pandemic or you know cooperating with the other developmental activities in this conference and fighting against the hegemonic politics see these are developmental related aspects but here in the june month in 2022 it said it wants to involved in the security of the region also see this is what the china's interest in the region <coughs> now there are prime uh, 
prime areas of the China, along with those statements and all, there are primary areas, they are infrastructure development, financial assistance to the developing and uh, underdeveloped countries in the region, then natural resources and maritime interests. These are the four key areas of the China in the region. Okay. Now, yes, China itself is involved in the region, but India is worrying because of the involvement of the China in the region. Why? Why this Chinese involvement in the region creates cause of concern for India? One is dominance in the Indian Ocean. The India will think that China will start to dominate in the Indian Ocean region. Indian Ocean is regarded for the long time, it has been regarded as the ocean of peace. Right. That means this region has not involved in the major conflicts. But now this peace can be, you know, uh, disturbed because of the Chinese involvement in the region. It is giving the China is giving the regions like the Somali piracy because of by giving the pretext of Somali piracy or Somali pirates, it is deploying its naval forces. It is establishing the naval bases in the region. Definitely, it will create the you know worry for India. Right. See, this will become the string of pearl. China, it is one of its diplomatic means to contain the India in the region. China is establishing the various naval bases and the military bases around the Indian mainland. So it is in the form of a string, that means a garland. The pearl is nothing but the military base or the naval base. In China is, you know, establishing lot of such pearls around, uh, around the India. See, this Djibouti could again become one of such, you know, a military base to contain India. See, this is the, this is how the China is, you know, establishing its dominance in the region. Then, vast shipping routes. These routes co could be controlled by China. I said, along with the 40% of the oil it is produced in the mil Middle East region, it, this Indian Ocean is also, you know, uh, region for 80% of the world's oil and it's one third of the global bulk car cargo. It so much of volume of, you know, goods and the oil is, you know transported across the Indian Ocean. But if the China involves in this region, it will affect the this, you know, she lines of communication or vital shipping routes in the region. Then it will influence the Indian Ocean countries because of the Belt and Road Initiative. Because in this initiative, the China is establishing or it is creating a lot of infrastructure projects. By establishing the infrastructure projects and by giving the cheaper loans for the long duration of time, the China is gaining the confidence of the countries in this Horn of Africa region. See, because of this, India is, you know, worried. Now, let's come to one more important, you know, development in the region that is Grand Renaissance Dam. Okay. There is a dam called Grand Renaissance Dam or Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. So this dam has created some of the issues. Let's look into the issue created by this dam. This dam is being constructed by Ethiopia. Okay. This is being built across the Nile River, especially the Blue Nile River. Okay. Blue Nile River, Blue Nile and the White Nile. These are the two very important tributaries of the Nile River. Okay. This dam has created the conflict among Ethiopia, Egypt and the Sudan, right? These are the three countries involved in the issue. Now, given the dam's location on the Blue Line tributary, it would allow Ethiopia to gain control over the flow of the river's waters. This Blue Nile contributes two-thirds of the water to the Nile River. See, that means Blue Nile is the very important tributary of the Nile River. If the Ethiopia constructs the dam across the Blue Nile, there will be reduced supply of the water to the other low-lying countries like the Sudan and Ethio sorry, uh, Egypt. Because of this, this Egypt and Sudan are worried. worried. So let's look at the map of this dam. <coughs> this is the Horn of African region. This is Somalia. This is Ethiopia. This is Djibouti. Right? This is Djibouti. This is Somalia. This is Ethiopia. This is Egypt and this is Sudan. This is where the Grand Renaissance Dam is being built by the Ethiopia. This is your Blue Nile, right? This is the Blue Nile and this is White Nile, right? Both of these will, you know, join together in the Sudan. After joining together, the, it will become single Nile River and it will flow across the Sudan and Egypt, right? This Blue Nile, it originates in the Ethiopia. Since this, you know, uh, originating in Ethiopia, 
this Ethiopia is constructing the dam. If it constructs the dam, two third of water flow will be affected in the Nile River, right? If the water is you no know, affected, if the low supply of water is there, this Sudan and Egypt will be affected. This Nile River flows from south to the north. The water movement direction is in this direction, in this way, right? There will be low supply of water in the Sudan and Egypt because of this, Egypt and Sudan are there fighting or they are creating issue against the dam in the Ethiopia. Now, this is I said this white Nile, this white Nile originates in the Victoria Lake. This is very important lake, Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria, one of the largest you know lakes in the African mainland. This Lake Victoria, it shares border or there are three countries which share the border with the Lake Victoria. They are you, you know, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda. These are the three countries which border the Lake Victoria, right? See, this is one factual information related to the Grand Renaissance Dam of the Ethiopia and the Blue Nile and the White Nile. This is all about the Horn of African region in the African mainland. Thank you very much for watching this video.